things, to be honest with you, man, things have gone from from good to better, and there's always been a hopefulness, you know, in the drive uh, of my music. Like, you know, I started out in my in my mom's basement. I took my my birthday and my Christmas money, and I, you know, bought a microphone and, and shoved it in my closet, and was like, you know, I'm gonna start recording myself. And then from there, you know, I moved it uh, to to another space, and I used more money that I made to build up the studio you know, even bigger and better. And then from there, uh, you know, I, I, I went off to college in New York City. And, you know, I was gonna go play football, but I was like, you know what, I'm never going pro. I wanna kill my body for no reason. So, I, you know, I applied to go to the, the, the School of Sonic Arts and, and, and do um, audio technology. I got denied after all the years of like experience I had building a studio, recording studio, I got denied from that program. And uh, that was like a blow to me because I'd moved to New York City for the entire purpose of like going to this college, going to this program, like learning how to record and mix and master all myself. And uh, getting denied from that program was like, a, a, it was depressing for me because I knew I had to wait an entire another year um, before I could apply again. It was, a, it was a sad freshman year in New York City, but I took the time um, that I would have been, you know, in those recording classes and and doing my thing. And I started finding like other things to do. And so that's when I really started working on my, my craft a lot more. I started getting into freestyle battles that were going on on 125th up in Harlem. Uh, I was I was shooting down to Brooklyn every day and I was working in Wu-Tang Studios down there at the Billy Holiday Theater. Like, you know, so I used that time to continue to like grow myself and get better. And then the following year I applied again and that's when I got in. And when I got into those studios, cause then I had access to the school studios, you know, pretty much whenever I wanted at that point. From there on, I just was like recording, making music. And that's where I recorded my first, um, my first record that got put on with Lecrae that ended up exposing me to everybody. And that's how they discovered me at Reach Records. Like, I guess that perseverance or that willingness to like not let getting, uh, getting denied from that program, like, make me just throw up my hands and say, forget about it. But having the courage to go try again, cause yo, you go back and you try to apply again to something you rejected a second time. That's like a double dosage of like, wow, I blew it. it. It was encouraging to be able to get in there. And then now I make music for a living. So, you know, things worked out. I want people to truly believe he's actually really happy. Cause nobody believes it. Everybody believes, nah, he gotta want more fans. He gotta want more people to know who he is. And I don't, I don't care. She was like, I'll give you $100 if you do it. Now she just told me she ain't had no money to buy my t-shirt, dog. And I'm hurting at the time. I, you know, like I'm not hurting, but I'm I'm trying to make my little merch money. The dude is just camped out in front of the tour bus. So we like, oh man, this dude's crazy, man. Like, sir, you gonna have to leave. He said, I ain't going nowhere. I got a message for Lecrae, I ain't going nowhere. How should I act as a child of God? You know, what's my responsibilities? being created in the likeness and the image of God. We don't think that. We just think like, yo, you offended me. Now I gotta act, I gotta do what I gotta do.